Ladies and gentlemen, the Cowboy Judge Show. Man, I, it never stops. Always I mean, cool, powerful, exciting, fun. People. Powerful. That's the word that I think of with uh, Steve Elman here, <laughs> county executive. I mean, I don't mean to make light of it or hope you don't take that the wrong way, but uh, seasoned uh, politician who knows uh, how to get things done. Uh, I always think mostly about the page extension running over from Page in St. Louis County up now through uh, Brian Road, former state senator, state representative, circuit judge, county executive now. I mean, the list uh, just really doesn't stop. And thank you so much for being on, Steve. Thanks, Mike. It's uh, when, when you read that uh, when you read that list of jobs, I hope people don't wonder what I what I want to be when I grow yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, and I left out the most important one. The uh, in a way, because if I remember right, you were a history teacher before you went into oh, your yeah. political endeavors. Is that yeah. right? And this is what I wanted to know. My degree is in elementary uh -huh. education, so I would love to know. Like, you're teaching history. At what point you're like, wait a second, I want to reevaluate my life. Um, I didn't. I didn't leave because of the history. I was a, a basketball coach, mm -hmm. and uh, I started program uh, out in uh, Lafayette High School in West West County. Okay. Uh, when I went out there, we were very bad the first year, better the next year, and average the third year. And I had my two best players uh, coming back, so I was real excited about the, the fourth year. And uh, both of them. Uh, screwed up their knees playing football. Oh, okay. And I, start, program. I started thinking maybe God had a different plan for me. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's when I decided to look into going back to law school. And and, uh, and I did. Well, his, they teach you in, uh, when you start thinking about taking the LSAT law school admissions test and that, that there's a couple of them that really mesh well with law. One of them, let's say philosophy. Mm -hmm. History is always yeah. a big one. And you actually wrote a historical, do you have a slide there or whichever, yeah. uh, a book? It's probably old to you now. Maybe was it 21 years ago you wrote that, or when was no, it? No, it was uh, the last version was in, in 12, so that would have been what eight years ago. Okay, oh, nice. but its first iteration when was uh, that? A few years before that. Okay, yeah. I thought it was some reason. That, Actually, uh, I wrote it when I became a judge. Oh, did you? As you know, you spend a lot of time sitting around waiting for somebody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> waiting, waiting for somebody, waiting for the lawyers who are late to show up. Right. right? Yeah. Hopefully, that wasn't one of them. <laughs> the uh, what, what inspired you to? I know you, you you're the county executive in St. Charles County. Yeah. Obviously, you care about the county, probably the state, but what, what uh, inspired you to get that book underway? Well, you know, originally I, I got a master's degree in history at the University of Missouri. I was actually working on a, on a Ph.D. in history when I decided there really weren't too many jobs. And okay. So I took a job in uh, uh, high school okay. here in St. Louis, and, uh, but continued to really, really love history. And then when I was practicing, I don't know if you ever met uh, Crete Stumberg. I don't uh, think so. Crete was at the end of his career probably when you were starting yours. Okay. He started practicing law in 1936 in St. Charles. He, uh, he, was, he just a, was a great lawyer, real involved in the community, and just was a great source of old stories. And he used to, I used to waste a lot of my time. I'd go in after lunch and he'd be there. Instead of going up and starting billing clients, right. you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd sit down and listen to him tell stories for, a, for an hour. So he's incorporated uh, in this book he, a little. Uh, absolutely, it's dedicated to him. Okay. And um, again, uh, he got me interested in this, the local aspects. But what I did with this book is really look at some of the larger national issues and state issues, but look and see how they were discussed and how they played out in St. Charles County specifically. Okay. Okay. I mean, we, we, we study all these things right. uh, and talk about them you know, uh, on a national level. But every one of those big national stories kind of had a local uh, a way of looking at it and people locally commenting on it. So I tried to, tried to be more than just a, a local history. I tried to make it a state and national issues and just kind of see how those issues played out locally in St. Charles County. I feel like there's a, just one last question, I'm sorry. The, uh, it, St. Charles, I, I know a lot of folks around, uh, as we all do, we've got about 400,000 people there now, mm -hmm. is that right? And, um, but there seems to be a historical weight of, like, I wonder if it stems from everybody knowing Lewis and Clark, you know, started their <laughs> thing, you know, in 1804, you probably know the date uh, better than I do, uh, to head out to, you know, the Pacific Ocean. And you think that has, that significance kind of brings a historical awareness there? Or you think I just imagined that? I, I think what's interesting about St. Charles County history is all the people who, who came there. In, in different ways. Obviously, the Native Americans first, then the, the French settlers. Okay, and we've got the French influence right, yeah, still around. Without a doubt. 
uh, St. Philippine Duchenne and all of that. And then uh, uh, after the Louisiana Purchase, of course, then the next big wave was, was Americans. From, right. Mainly from Kentucky and Virginia and Tennessee who, who came in. But then an even larger wave began in the 1930s when you had the gigantic German immigration. Right. And by the time the Civil War, half the people in St. Charles County were either German immigrants or the, or the descendants of German immigrants. And by the, uh, the end of the 19th century, it was probably close to two-thirds, uh, maybe three-fourths of the people in St. Charles County. Okay. And then, and then we had a period not much growth from about 1880 to 1940. But after the war and during the war was the beginning of the, of the great immigration that's still going on. Yes. Which is people from outside the county, many from St. Louis City and county and other parts of the region and other parts of the country. So, so we've had yet a, another influx. And historically, every time one of these new groups came in, there was conflicts on certain things. There were cultural differences that had to be worked out. There were problems that arose, but there were also great opportunities for growth when you have those that new right. uh, infusion of people and energy yeah. and so forth. And uh, right now, I mean, we've got problems because of growth in St. Charles County, but we've got a lot of opportunities as well. Right. Well, well St. Charles growing. is really a booming place now more than I remember from before. I, mm -hmm. I don't live in St. Charles, so mm -hmm. I'm outside of that. But a lot of my friends will be like, where are you going to go? Well, let's go to St. Charles. So that's kind of become like a hot spot. Um, I think it is. Uh, you know, when I was your age, uh, you had to go to you had to go to St. Louis County to find a hot spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And now, well, wait a and now we got we got hot spots. You got hot spots. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, 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 you've educated me now on the history. I thought uh -huh. everybody that lived in St. Charles came from South County or North County. Uh, that was, but you're saying French and Portuguese and all these other, there's oh, a yeah. long history. Over the years. And, and we all are transplants into St. Charles. I moved from Fenton, right? Mm -hmm. Thought I was going to get married. That didn't happen. Here we are. So now it, it's a Mecca. I think it's the best place in St. Louis to live in St. Louis area because there's so much going on there. And you get access to almost any part of the city. I can be downtown at Bush Stadium in 27 minutes. I can be out west. I can go to the, the Rascals. I can go to the Ambush. A lot of people I don't think knew, tell me if I'm wrong here, but St. Charles used to be the capital for the state of Missouri. Yeah, for six years. For for, okay, I didn't know how long five it was. Five years, 21 that's to 26. That's a cool historical fact. And how yeah. did that happen? Well, the, first did state, the first state capital building is still there downtown. Right. It's part of the historic district, which I think is really the most interesting part of St. Right. Charles County. Maybe it's because I'm... In the government. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And in the government. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and when I was a little kid, I mean, that area was a slum. There were people talking about tearing it all down. And oh, really? Wow. Some federal housing project or something. And uh, thank goodness they didn't because I think it's a real treasure now. Everything's been restored. Uh, it's uh, the Christmas traditions have kind of become a regional yes. tradition. That's, oh, yeah, 100%. That's huge. Uh, people from yeah. all over the region tell me they come out to Yes. Come well, out and it's St. turned Charles into a Christmas. major major tourist attraction down there. Main Street, the lights, the yeah. whole Christmas thing. That's a good yeah. point. And, I, and that's, you know, and, and, and so when you, people talk about St. Charles County, it's, it's, it's tough to generalize because St. Charles is unique, okay, and has some really great things going for it because of its history and so forth. You go to the other end of the county, you got Wentzville, which is the fastest growing community right. in the state, mm -hmm. sure. which which has a lot going for it. And in between, you got, you know, St. Peter's, uh, O'Fallon, uh, Lake St. Louis, a bunch of other up and coming cities like right. Cottleville, Wellness Harvester, Springs, that's uh, uh, technically. Darden Prairie. Yeah. And okay. that's another thing, too, that I think is really uh, important to understand about St. Charles and its future. I mentioned six major cities and maybe two or three more that might become major cities in, in terms of, you know, population. Right. Compare that to St. Louis County, which has 91 municipalities. Yes. You know, we've got six good, six good size, two or three a little bit smaller, and then we got a few villages that are there, just are right. just there historically, like Portage to Sioux and Defiance and some places like that. But all of our, those six cities uh, are all big enough to have a professional police department. Right. They're all big enough to have professional planning and zoning. And most importantly, they're all big enough to have all types of neighborhoods. And if you go to every one of our cities, we've got, you'll find some very, very nice, exclusive neighborhoods with beautiful 
large gated homes. communities. Yeah. And you'll find low income worker workforce housing. Right. And you'll find a whole lot in between. Sure. But I think one of our strengths is to the extent where you have the, where, where you have the low income housing uh, and, and, and the kids who live there tend to have need more help at school and you tend to have more crime in those neighborhoods. And you could look at uh, at St. Louis County and St. Louis City where they have almost all of their poor people living in a concentrated area which I think then creates more problems. Yeah, you've got compounded More problems. In, in, in St. Charles County we've got problems too. We've, sure. we've got crime. We've got uh, kids that need more help in school. But they don't all live in the same place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I right? thought about you've that. Got a bunch so of kids so if you together. have you have crime, we have crime, but uh, each of our major police departments can deal with a part of the problem. And we don't have one city you know, that has to deal with half of the criminals right. in the whole county right. uh, like you might have in, in, in St. Louis County. And the same thing is true. We got, instead of 25, we've got five school districts. Every one of them have very nice neighborhoods. Every one of them have some, some poor neighborhoods. And to the extent those kids and poor families need more help, there's help there, there, there's, there's help there for them. And you're right about that because the, uh, like there's a couple really stand out, uh, Independence Elementary over in Francis Howell, everybody mm -hmm. talks about it, but otherwise, you know, from Wentzville to Francis Howell to Zumwalt, I mean, really, they're all very similar. You don't hear any yeah. bashing of any one of them in particular. Probably Wentzville grew a little faster than it should, and had kids in trailers yeah. for a little while, but I mean, they're getting past that now too. Well, you know, you have the free and reduced lunch numbers, and every, every, uh, district in St. Charles County is between 19 and 37. Okay, so once again, every one of them has some, some poor kids. Right. But none of them is like Normandy, where 99% of the kids are on free and reduced lunch. Okay, yeah. Or Riverview, or the city of St. Louis schools. And uh, I think that's, uh, when, when people uh, ask me, well, do you think you're eventually gonna have some of the same problems in St. Charles County that they're now having in St. Louis County? I, I tell them, well, if, if we do things exactly the same way they did, we probably will. History uh, tends to repeat itself. Yeah, I said uh, hopefully our schools have a different playbook and our municipal governments hopefully have a different playbook. Right. I certainly have a different playbook because I don't want those same problems that, that they're having now to be our problems later on. And I think having, uh, again, again, having uh, major cities with all types of people living in each city is going to help us to avoid some of those problems that, that uh, that high density poverty has created in other parts of the region. We had Ang uh, two real estate agents on, Rob Hussey and Christy Weber. Christy Weber, my friend Christy, there we go. Mm -hmm. And Christy, I got her shirt here somewhere with ambush stuff we do. Uh, she's a big supporter. They talked about how St. Charles has really become one of the best places in the country to live. Mm -hmm. Is that true? And what, what really has influenced that? Yeah, well, um, again, I think uh, a part of it is. Um, what I've been talking about. Uh, we have the highest uh, uh, per family or per capita income. Okay, so it's income county. versus cost of living? It's income, yeah. And, and, uh, and But again, uh, there's not, the, the average income in St. Charles is not much different than the average income. I think it's 75 a county. family or something, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's not much different in St. Louis County. But again, in St. Louis County, you have, I think, more extremes. You have more extreme wealth, you know. I mean, there's, we don't, we can't compete with some of the communities in Front St. Mac Louis County. Right, right, uh, right. We don't have those types of that type of wealth. But on the other hand, we don't have the kind of abject poverty mm -hmm. that you might find in certain parts of St. Louis County. Again, uh, it's it's a very middle class um, uh, community. Um, when I was growing up, it was it was a bedroom community. Okay, just about everybody crossed the river to work in St. Louis oh, County. Oh yeah, a lot right, of right. Worked, That's worked, really worked, changed. My dad worked was a milkman. Okay, right. He worked for St. Charles Dairy. And he so he worked in town. Yeah, and uh, we love them. But all man. the all the rest of my friends, their kids, or their uh, their dads all worked at at Mac. Okay. Yeah, and of course their dads were the ones who. Built the Mercury space capsule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's like it's like my dad built space 
space capsules. What does your dad do? He's a milkman. <laughs> hey, there's no, no yeah, shame in that. I still drink a glass of milk no every day. No shame in that at all. There's so many Angel. jokes with the milkman, but I just leave most of them, <laughs> most of them untouched for the yeah. show, I think. <laughs> hey, most of these young kids, they don't even know what a milkman well, yeah, is. They, yeah, right, right, right. right. We handle those kids. Hey, so what's yeah. your perspective on living? You grew up in Webster Groves area, right? I sure did. I grew up in Webster Groves, yes. Right. You went to Webster Groves High School mm -hmm. and all, like, the Webster Groves, Kirkwood. Go WG. Right. Was, was St. Charles always this far in land? It yeah, seems like? for sure. When I was definitely, like, like I said earlier, when I was in high school, that was definitely like, that's really far away. Right. Well, I have people that are like, dude, you live in another, another but state. But now another it's more of, well, what are we going to do tonight? I don't know. Let's go to St. Charles because yeah, it, right. it, it has kind of turned that page. Okay. But to circle back to what you were talking about before, other than troubleshooting and, you know, having, you know, more police to deal with these kind of crimes, what are you looking at to make sure you it doesn't fall into a problem like St. Louis City is having? Uh, well, I mean, a big part of it, I think, is law enforcement, and uh, you know, we have a we have a, a, a very professional uh, police department that I'm very proud of. Um, we um, um, we probably need to hire more police officers. We probably need to pay them more. Um, but right now we've got some financial. Um, yeah, how is e-commerce? You were saying that e-commerce and stuff, stealing some of the tax yeah. base and, and that oh, through your Amazon. And I guess with the Wayfair uh, decision back in July 18, you know, uh, more and more cities are going to be tapping into online sales too if they can tra track them down. But I guess e-commerce is, you know, there's a steady decline for our county and our cities within the county collecting on these sales tax. Mm -hmm. That they've always been accustomed to collecting is that right yeah and 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 the two are very much related here and and um i haven't uh, we're trying to put together numbers uh, that include all this all the cities but in the unincorporated area of st charles county last year we had twice as many car break-ins as we had the year before okay oh. wow. in the okay. whole county that's before still to that, the river no yeah but that's just unincorporated okay that's okay just, yeah, we're, yeah. Our, we're our police which but i think it's probably true in the cities as well okay so i mean that's one indication and that's something we're working very hard on to to find these folks and make sure they don't come back um but it's uh it, it not only requires uh funding a police department uh which which we provide it's, it's available for everybody, but generally just patrols in the unincorporated areas. And, and the city police, of course, are in each city. But city or county police, when they catch them, as you well know, they send them to our jail. Right, yeah, okay. exactly. And we, we, it costs us a lot of money to, to do that jail. Okay? And we do that not just for unincorporated, for the whole area. And uh, our jail, um, it's 30 years old now. Uh, it... Uh, when it was built, it was built, it was, actually, I was told if it had been built two or three years later, it would have be, been built entirely differently. Oh. Uh, yeah. But the biggest difference is, uh, 30 years ago, it was built mainly for, what, for DW, people con you know, convicted of DWI. It's right, built, right. Uh, you know, it was built to hold uh, uh, spousal abuse, uh, domestic. defendants, and, Low level. and people who get in into fights outside bars on Friday night. Right, right, right. right. Well, now it's stepped up. It's a, a lot different now. The, the what type do you think of the cause criminal of we're getting now is the professional criminal class who has a very different view of the value of life and a very different view about how to treat their fellow man and uh, the kind of um, person we have coming into our jail now is a whole lot different than it was even 15 or 20 years ago. Well, what do you think the cause of that is? And that's a cultural change, It's right? a cultural change. And it's so, but, but it's the, the same thing that's led to uh, 200 murders in the city of, uh, of St. Louis this year. And There's a lot more, more people in St. Charles. 400,000, you know, it's just been growing. Well, we have 100,000 more than the city of, uh, city of St. Louis. Yeah. But uh, in, in, in at this point, um, you know, we're very, very lucky. We haven't had a lot, the kind of rash of murders, but it's, uh, it's, it is a, a cultural thing. And apparently there are people who just uh, don't care. Uh, they've resigned themselves to the fact they're gonna spend a certain amount of portion of their lives in, in jail. And, um, and that's where I wanna hit with, what, what do you think some of the solutions are to, to correct that? Because 
there are ways, we talked earlier, on another previous show we had, we talked about how the cultural issues affect our whole community, and there's got to be, putting you know, somebody in jail, I think, is one solution, but what kind of programs can be put in place to help people understand these things to make these improvements, to make, help these kids understand and, and, and value the things we're talking about? Well, I'll tell you a story. Last Friday uh, morning, the Business Journal had its uh, annual uh, uh, breakfast Okay, a state of the region breakfast, and they, they have had myself and, and other executives and the mayor of St. Louis. And uh, this year, they also invited Kim Gardner, the uh, prosecutor in the city, and Wesley Bell, the prosecutor in St. Louis County. Mm -hmm. So we had like eight people up there, and and everybody in the audience, obviously, you know, it's it's the business journal, so they're econo they're in economic development is what right, they're right. really right. interested well, in. Usually provides and, a and. You know, I tell people in, in, in St. Charles County that, man, we're doing, we're doing really well. Things are, things are good. But they're not going to be good forever mm -hmm. if we can't get the region going. Right. All right? Well, I people on the east and west coast that are thinking about moving a business somewhere, mm -hmm. they don't think about moving to St. Charles County. In Although the past, we got Amazon, that's a big deal. Well, in the past, they've talked about, they think about moving to St. Louis. And when people look at St. Louis, they right. realize St. Charles is a good place to be. But I'm afraid with all the, the, the crime and the Ferguson effect and, and all the other uh, high murder rates and so forth, I, I'm afraid there's people that are just scratching St. Louis region off their, off their list. And it's just a matter of time, unless we get the region going, where St. Charles is gonna be no growth just like St. Louis County is today. What's your feeling about merging the city with the county? And we're talking St. Louis County, I guess. St. Louis City and County? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that uh, the Better Together came up with that idea. I didn't, uh, uh, my, my initial reaction, uh, and I think my continuing uh, reaction is, I, I don't know if that was the, the right way to do it. Looks like it probably wasn't. But if what I said then is, if you're not going to do that, what are you going to do? Right, right. Because what we're doing right now is not working. Well, right. speaking of that, you know, I'll skip past one point and land on another one. Is that you know, we, uh, being in St. Charles County, we're always hearing about I don't know, parent paying our fair share or something. I know the zoo downtown, everybody loves it for a 200 mile radius, and you know, should St. Charles County pay some uh, taxes toward mm -hmm. you know the zoo? And I'm sure uh, we can all wrap our minds around the concept, but I don't know if we want to go down that hole. But as far as the the airport has always been kind of an anomaly. Uh, in the region where the city owns an airport that's, you know, 25 miles away from it, maybe farther. I don't know my geography perfectly. But uh, it used to be if you wanted to catch a cab there, it had to be a city cab. If you wanted a St. Louis County cab, you had to call them in from outside of their cordoned off zone. It's just bizarre stuff. And I know the past uh, 20 months, anyway, it seems like you've been inserting your ideas into this, maybe a new cooperative or mm -hmm. something that might take over the airport. That's about all I know. Can you tell us well, what the, that is? the zoo first. The okay. zoo first, and yes, uh, uh, it's it's supported by the taxpayers in St. Louis City and St. Louis County. Uh, 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 bringing other taxpayers in from St. Charles County would make it better, but it still wouldn't be completely fair. I've always said if if they can't support it on their own, well, then they they need to discharge admission for everybody. Charge the visitors. Charge the visitors. I think like okay. they maybe do in San Diego. I've never been opposed to that. I hope they don't. But if that's what has to happen fine. We did uh, some polling uh, a couple years ago uh, and asked people whether they would support a tax for the zoo. And uh, basically it was 39 percent. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, I hear you. you know, Not and, enough. You know, yeah, 39 percent said that they would support. We also asked them, would you support us using existing tax revenue for our parks, using that to help the zoo? And a plurality of the people said sure we would do that and what we have what we did after that is meet with the zoo association on several occasions uh, when it was all said and done um, out in your neighborhood in New Melly that park we have out there right uh, 450 acres we, we only had like 250 we bought another 200 because they said they needed the zoo needed 450 acres for a conservation area so we bought it it included a, a home a very nice home on a 60 acre lake they went out there, they even, man, they thought it was great and ideal. Uh, we basically told them, listen, we're not, people out here right now are not going to support a tax, but we will give you the 450 acres oh, you know, wow. for, a, for a buck a 
a year or something like that. We will also take the nearly million dollars a year that we collect from the regional parks tax, which was passed back in 2000, so used to build all the trails. Okay. We get a portion of that to use however we want. We'll contribute that to building your conservation area. Well, instead, they went ahead and paid $7.2 million for the, uh, the facility uh, in North County where the uh, pipe fitters okay. uh, golf course was. Right, right. And, 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 that, and, that, and that's fine. That's, that, that was their decision. But the point is, I just don't want them to keep saying that we don't care and haven't made an effort to do something to help the ZMD. And my long-term suggestion was until you have something like that in St. Charles, people out there are not going to vote to tax themselves right. for it. But if you, if you started uh, something like that out there, I think it'd be real easy down the road to convince people in St. Charles this is a good yeah, Baby a good steps, basically, do. yeah. The airport is similar, and it comes down to you know, who controls, who owns, who paid for it. Uh, the city, the city uh, back in 1928 passed a $2 million bond issue. Um, they passed another one in 1943. They bought the ground from Colonel Lambert, or Ma Major Lambert, uh, and, they, and they built an airport, and, and thank goodness they did. They had the foresight to do that. It was government obligation bonds, so they were on the hook for it. Good for them, we thankful, and so forth and so on. But from 1956 on, every, all the improvements at the airport have been paid for by revenue bonds. And the revenue has come either from uh, uh, the air, airlines paying rent or all of us when we travel paying landing fees. Oh. And you add to that a whole bunch of federal grants that are paid for by all the taxpayers. So the, the argument is um, if, if you had to buy, it, buy out the city's interest, how much is that worth? Is it worth, you know, should they be compensated for that initial investment they made? Or should they somehow expect all of us to pay twice <laughs> for the rest of it? Because we've been paying for the airport since 1956. Understood. They haven't had to invest any of their money. In fact, they take 6% of the earnings out of the airport every year and take it back down to the city. And that's why uh, when this privatization issue came up, you know, uh, they asked me a year and a half ago what I thought about privatization. I, I told them, hey, if privatization is the best way and most efficient way to run the airport, then maybe we should privatize. But what I didn't want to see happen was the money that would be made off privatization. The city was talking about taking that benefit and taking it down to the city, to the city budget, and, um, and spending it on problems in the city which I personally can't think can't be solved with money alone. We, uh, I want to talk about the airport forever, but we're down to a negative nine seconds, I guess. So uh, <laughs> I can't believe you came on to share with us all the stuff that you know, uh, the history that you have. I just, I always run through it because I like politics, if anybody doesn't know it. And, you know, state rep is, you know, at first you're, you're one of many and you don't have a voice. State senator, you're getting closer. Now county executive, wave a wand and, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not that simple. But <laughs> Pretty close. I am so happy you came on. Thanks, uh, you bet, Mike. County Executive Elman. Nice Thank to you meet so you. Much. Thank you. Yes, appreciate yeah, you coming nice on the show. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cowboy Judge Show. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching.